Okay, the subject of this video is going to be the ontological argument. I decided to give it its own special place because it's a difficult argument to understand and explain. And I think also being able to see the argument visually can be helpful in understanding it. Uh, the ontological argument is actually associated with two uh, philosophers. Uh, first of all, we have um, St. Anselm, who is at least the first person on record to make the ontological argument. He was a monk, I think, in the 1100s or something like that. Um, don't quote me on that, even though now this is going to be for the entire world to see. But he lived a long time ago, and you can see he was very old. The other person is our good friend René Descartes, uh, who was anything but a saint. Uh, but nonetheless, he also used the ontological argument as part of his um, group of proofs of God's existence. And um, he, at least according to reports, was not aware that he was using the same argument as Anselm. But nonetheless, um, it was to him a powerful argument. Now, what do we mean when we call the ontological argument ontological? Ontology has to do basically with being or essence. And so the idea behind the ontological argument is that somehow, if we understand the essence, the uh, being of God, then we have to admit that God necessarily has to exist. And let's take a look at um, how this argument is uh, put forward. All right. Um, this shows that I can spell the words ontological and argument, which um, for me is actually quite an accomplishment. Okay, the first premise to this argument is a definition of God. God, by definition, is that being than which none greater can be conceived. All right, and by conceived, um, obviously I don't mean born, but thought of. Okay, so basically what we're saying is think of the greatest possible being. God is that greatest possible being. Now, again, this is a definition. So if you say, well, I don't believe that this being exists, that's not particularly important. We'll get to that later. Um, but the idea here is that if you could think of God, that is, if I use the word God in a sentence, um, you should at least understand that by God, usually in our culture, uh, we mean the greatest being which can be thought of. The second premise is that it's greater to exist than not to exist. Um, think of a pizza. I know I haven't talked about pizza very much. But think of a pizza and um, think about an existing pizza and then a non-existing pizza. Which one would you rather have? Which one is the better pizza? And I'm not talking about a pizza with anchovies or uh, peanut butter or whatever it is that we don't like on pizzas, but a good pizza. And obviously, something that exists is better than something that doesn't exist. Therefore, if I conceive of God as not existing, I can conceive of a greater existing God. So I think of God, I'm thinking God doesn't exist. Well, I can think of a greater God, which would be one God that did exist, and so therefore that existing God would be the greatest possible being, not the non-existing God. Therefore, um, I'm compelled to admit that God exists. All right, let's look over this argument for a few minutes. First of all, um, we have to be careful in looking at this to understand what is being claimed here. Once we buy the definition at the beginning that God is that being than which none greater can be conceived, it seems to follow, first of all, that it is greater to exist than not to exist, and God, therefore, has to exist. Now, you might bring up the idea, well, maybe it isn't greater to exist than not to exist. Um, you know, certainly we can think of things that are better off not existing. Um, Michael, um, no, who am I thinking of? Um, Michael Bolton, yeah. Or, sorry, Michael Bolton fans, or perhaps Michael Bolton, if you get on YouTube. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe me at this particular point in time. Or mosquitoes, or, um, I don't know, uh, chalkboards, if they still exist anywhere. Um, sure, it is better for bad things not to exist than to exist, but for a good thing, and remember part of the definition of God is being good, and we can even say that goodness is greater than badness. Uh, in either case, it would be better for a good thing to exist than not to exist. A million dollars um, would be better, a pizza would be better, etc., etc. So, um, 
The second premise then is saying that, you know, if we're talking about a good thing, it's definitely better that this good thing exists than it not exist. The third um, part of the argument then is, um, follows from the first two, that if I conceive of God as not existing, I could think of a greater God, which would be an existing God. Um, therefore, I have to admit that God exists. All right, I want to stop at this point and have you just think about the ontological argument. You know, look at this carefully, maybe write it down and see if you can find any flaws in this argument. It, it appears to be a valid argument, doesn't it? I mean, once we accept the definition, and by the way, this definition is not anything, you know, if, if um, you, know, you hear someone use the word God, um, other than as an expletive, of course, in common conversation, I think this fits what most of us understand by God. Um, it certainly is better to exist than not to exist, and so it seems like this is a pretty good argument. Now, at this point, I want you to think about this argument and do one of two things. Either see if you can find a flaw in the argument, at, at least something that, um, you know, poses a problem. And um, if you can't find a flaw, watch the next video. If um, you can't find a flaw and you're still not convinced, um, you have one of two choices. You can either change your mind and head to church right away or watch the next video. But I don't want to give away um, some of the analysis until you have a chance to really uh, think about this argument. It's a brilliant argument and um, something that um, you don't want to take for granted. So right now, stop watching the video, um, go off someplace, think about the ontological argument and see if you can find some flaws. And in the next video, we'll talk about some critiques of the ontological argument.